Good morning, all of you. Today, we'll start our session with introduction to signals and systems. So, what is signal? What is signal? So, basically, signal is a physical quantity. Signal is a physical quantity that contains information that contains information so any physical quantity which has a information is called as signal so if we draw a signal like this then it shows that this signal has a value equals to 1 from period t is equal to 0 to period t is equal to 1 and since f of t contains this information therefore we call this signal this quantity as a signal this definition is quite non-technical definition of a signal but if we want to express signal technically mathematically then in mathematical form we can express this signal as a function of independent variable function of independent variable now immediately question may come in your mind what is mean by independent variable so basically there are two types of variables in a two dimensional system found those are called as dependent variable and independent variable if we draw any signal which has a shape something like this which varies with respect to let's say t and we denote this function as let's say f of t and this signal is varying something like this then we can say that this signal which is denoted by symbol f of t is dependent on function on variable t or the value of this signal is dependent on variable t suppose we take this time instant then at this time instant the value of this signal is let's say 1.3 volt similarly so on and so forth and therefore we can conclude that at every interval of time this function has some value that means this value of function is dependent on time factor and therefore this f of t variable is called as dependent variable and this time is called as independent Variable. So, we have already stated that our signal we can express as a function of independent variable. So, we can define y of t equals to f of t as a signal. This is a mathematical form, mathematical description of a signal. In later course, later part of this lecture will discuss various types of signal but prior to that it is very essential to understand now what is mean by system so system is a physical interconnection of various devices so if let's say this is a black box this is a black box to which we refer as a system it has this input and this is output the input is referenced as xt and output is referenced as yt this input in context of control system is called as many a times as excitation this is called as excitation and the output that we receive at the output is called as the response is called as the response so there is excitation and there is a response so 
this system has single input and single output therefore it is called as single input single output type of a system there may be a system exist which has multiple input and multiple output so there may be a system which which is in existence which has multiple input and multiple output such systems are called as m i m o type of systems so we have seen basically two different types of systems wherein it has only single input and single output and there are systems wherein there are multiple inputs and multiple outputs now let us quickly go to the discussion of various types of signals types of signals so if we plot a signal like this if we plot a signal whose nature is something like this so this is a continuous signal continuous with respect to time if we take these intervals as 0 1 and 2 then in between 0 to 2 period this signal is continuously varying so this type of signal is called as continuous time continuous with respect to time and as well as if you refer the amplitude of this signal is plus 5 volt here and here it is minus 5 volt so this signal is varying in between plus 5 volt to minus 5 volt and at any instant of time we get certain constant continuous value and therefore this is continuous time continuous value signal there is this is first type of a signal there is another class of a signal varying varying if we draw a signal something like this which is varying i have shown this is by dotted line because there is a sudden change at this interval let us define these intervals 0 1 and 2 so at 1 the value of signal abruptly changes from this plus value plus b to negative b so here if we observe the signal is continuous with respect to time therefore we call this signal as a continuous time continuous in time but if we refer the amplitude at one we cannot define the amplitude because at one at time t equals to one its amplitude is plus v as well as minus v and therefore this is called as discrete in value discrete in value so this is continuous time discrete in value type of signal there is another class of a signal varying suppose we have two different kinds of signals like this this is one signal and there is one more type of a signal like this generally in signals and systems we call such a types of signal as a impulse signal we call these signals as a impulse signal and this is my input signal so if we multiply these two signals if we multiply these two signals then you observe this impulse signal is having value amplitude value equals to 1 and in between it has a value zero so whenever this signal impulse is multiplied with this signal then we get the value of signal only at these particular intervals of time let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 at these intervals of time we we'll get the sample values and our signal will look like something like this is it fine so our signal will look like something like this and here if we observe in between let's say t is equal to 0 so let's say t is equal to 8 the signal is defined but it is not continuous in time rather it is a discrete in time it is defined only at the discrete intervals it is defined at the discrete intervals and its value is continuous continuous in the sense 
its value, let's say the sample value at this point, let's say it is 1.1 volt. Here, it, let's say it is 2.7 volt. And here it is, let's say it is equal to 5 volt. Again, here it is, let's say 2.9 volt. So on and so forth. Here in negative direction, it is minus 1.1 volt. So on and so forth. So as far as value of the signal is concerned, it is continuous. It is continuous. So it is continuous in value, but it is discrete in interval, time interval. So this is the third type of classification of a signal. If you observe this process of multiplying these two signals, this process technically it is named as a sampling. Later on we will discuss in later lectures, series of lectures, what exactly mean by sampling is. But at this instant of time, just keep in mind this process of multiplying any signal, any continuous time signal by an periodic impulse signal is called as a sampling. Then there is a fourth category of a signal and it is called as <coughs> digital signal. Digital signal. Digital signal. And this signal is also referred as discrete in time and discrete in value as well. Discrete in value as well. And it can be generally drawn like this. So here let's say this is my discrete signal. Discrete in time and discrete in value. So such a types of signals are called as digital signals. And these types of signals are generally obtained after passing the uh, sampled signals or after sampling process Generally, in communication engineering, one more process is followed that is called as a quantization. So, after quantization, we we'll get such a type of signal. So, these are the basic four categories of signals normally we came across while working in signals and systems. We have discussed signals, we have discussed systems, we have classified signals. Now, let us quickly go through the various operations, various operations related to signals. So, there are mainly uh, three, four operations. Number one, first operation is a time shift, time shifting operation, time shifting operation. For example, X of T is the original signal. Then if we shift this signal, then we can denote this by this way, T plus or minus T naught, where T naught is a constant, is a constant. And when we represent such a type of signal, then it is called as time shifting. Later on, we will discuss it in more details. First of all, we will just list out the various options and then we will go. The second type of operation is called as time scaling. Time scaling. For example, x of t is a given signal, and if you want x of alpha t, then this signal is called as a time scaled signal. Here, the value of alpha decides the value of uh, uh, the nature of this x of t after scaling. If alpha is greater than 1, then we will get a compression, compressed signal. And if value of alpha is less than 1, then we will get a elongation in signal or stretched signal. The signal gets stretched. If the value of alpha is greater than 1, then the signal is getting compressed. If the value of alpha is less than 1, then the signal gets elongated. Then the third very important type of operation which exists in signal, third type of operation and is called as time reversal. Time reversal operation or it is also called as folding. It is also called as 
फोल्डिंग ऑफ सिग्नल ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज फोल्डिंग ऑफ सिग्नल सो वॉट बेसिकली फोल्डिंग और टाइम रिवर्सल ऑपरेशन इज इफ एक्स ऑफ टी इज द सिग्नल गिवन टू यू एंड इफ वी रिवर्स द सिग्नल इन टाइम डोमेन देन दिस सिग्नल इज कॉल्ड एज रिवर्स सिग्नल और फोल्डेड वर्शन ऑफ एक्स ऑफ टी अब लेट एस टेक वन एग्जाम्पल अंडरस्टैंड वट एग्जैक्टली दीज ऑपरेशन आर सो लेट से वी हैव अ सिग्नल एक्स ऑफ टी गिवन लाइक दिस x of t is defined from let's say uh, let's say t is equal to minus 2 to let's say t is equal to let's say 4 this is my x of t and this is my time axis and let's say its value amplitude is 1 volt now we'll try to implement all the uh, operations on the signal first we'll apply time shifting time shifting so let's say for example if we want x of t plus 4 plus or minus 4 at a time only we have one operation that means either it is x of t plus 4 or it is x of t minus 4 so let's consider the case t plus 4 so when sin is plus when sin is plus it indicates advancement it indicates advancement and when there is negative sign that it indicates a delay now what is what are these terminologies what is mean by advancement and what is mean by delay for example if we are starting at t is equal to 0 t 1 2 3 4 these are let's say time various time intervals when we say time advancement then we are moving ahead of time let's say suppose if we are starting at t is equal to 1 when we say the signal is advanced then instead of starting at t is equal to 1 it will start from let's say t is equal to 0 it will start it may start from let's say t is equal to minus 1 so on and so forth so such a categories of signals are called as advanced signals whereas if we are starting at t is equal to 0 and our signal let's say start from t is equal to 2 originally signal was starting from t is equal to 0 and after delaying if it starts from let's say t is equal to 2 then we can surely say that this signal is in delay operation we can exactly correlate this phenomenon this idea with the railway arrival and departure time if railway arrives before time then we can say that it is advanced in time and when train is somewhat late to the given time then we can say that the train is late exactly same concept is applied here so let's try to find out x of x of t plus 4 this advanced signal we'll try to draw first of all this advanced signal and later on we'll try to draw the delay signal so this is my x of t plus 4 signal my original x of t is like this now signal gets advance advance by how many samples and it get advance by four samples that means whatever appearing at t is equal to 4 now will appear at t is equal to 0 because four samples we are getting advance so this four will come at here and similarly this minus 2 will go at four samples ahead and therefore four four samples ahead means it will come at minus 6 so this is minus 6 then minus 5 minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 and 0 so my signal gets gets moved like this so this is my x of t plus 4 and if we want to draw x of t minus 4 let us let us draw this original signal as it is once again so as to understand the concept this is time axis t this is x of t this is starting from t is equal to minus 2 this is let's say equal to 4 this is 
it is no way concerned this delay operation is no delay or advance time related any operation no way concerns with the amplitude so this is my given signal and i am interested in x of t minus 4 so while plotting this i am aware that when we say it is x of t minus 4 it means it's a delay signal so if it appears at t is equal to minus 2 it will be delayed by how many samples it is delayed by 4 samples so minus 2 plus 4 so how much how much it is minus 2 to 0 it is 2 and 0 to 2 it is 4 so therefore instead of signal which will be starting uh, which had started from minus 2 it will start from t is equal to 2 and here if you observe instead of this point at t is equal to 4 the total width of the signal is minus 2 to 0 it is 2 samples and from 0 to 4 it is 4 so 4 plus 2 it is 6 so from 2 now i have to move 6 samples ahead so 2 to 6 means it is 8 so my this end will come and sit at 8 so it is my delayed signal so in this way we can plot the delayed version of the signal next operation let's say my x of t is given as in order to understand the concept we take a very simple signals let's say my signal is varying from 0 to 4 and its amplitude is 2 this is my x of t and i am interested in let's say 2t x of 2t so when i am plotting when i am plotting let's say when i am plotting x of 2t versus 2t okay I, here this signal is varying with respect to t then there will be no change the signal will remain as it is because i am plotting x of 2t with respect to 2t but when i am plotting x of 2t with respect to t then you observe here instead of 2t it has become now t so now if 2t is equal to 4 then t will be equal to 4 by 2 so this point will appear at so it will start from 0 and it is no way concerned with the amplitude as I said earlier and therefore if you observe these two signals this is my original signal and this is after after time scaling this is the nature of signal the waveform shape will remain set, same only the thing is that the signal gets compressed and therefore here you have observed the value of alpha is equal to 2 which is greater than 1 and hence the signal get compressed the signal get compressed in the same line in the same line if we have our signal x of t which we have taken earlier this is 0 to 4 amplitude is 2 and here if i am interested in let's say t by 2 i am interested in t by 2 so if somebody asks us to plot signal t by 2 versus x of t by 2 then the shape and size and duration everything will remain same there will be no change but since i am interested in plotting x of t by 2 versus t now here you observe t by 2 is equal to 4 therefore t will become equal t by 2 is equal to 4 therefore t will now become equal to 8 so this point which was appearing at 4 now will appear at 8 so my signal will become something like this amplitude will remain same so you observe here alpha is equal to 0.5 which is less than 1 and hence the signal you observe it gets stretched it gets elongated it gets elongated okay so these are the very two important operations as far as uh, signal operations are concerned signal compression and signal elongation when the value of alpha is greater than 1 signal get compressed and when the value of alpha is less than 1 signal gets elongated and the last third type of operation is the x of t is given to you and you are interested in plotting x of minus t it's very simple if signal is given something like this 0 to 2 then its folded signal will be simply you have to reverse the time axis whatever happening in positive 
axis of time will now get reverse and it will happen in the negative side of a time axis so here in, in this case here originally signal was from 0 to 2 on positive t axis now since t is negative it will be from like this so this is minus 2 to 0 amplitude will remain same so this is called as a folding of a signal or it is also called as time reversal time reversal so in next class we'll take still various examples and uh, therein we we'll saw all these operations coming together and then we'll go further so thank you very much